we will now move on to some properties of Laplace transforms. The first property of Laplace transforms that is important is linearity. The Laplace transform is an operator. It's a function that takes as inputs certain functions and outputs other functions. So we saw previously that it inputs, say, a function of t, and then the Laplace transform outputs a function of s. And the theorem is, is that that Laplace transform is actually a linear operator. We can also think about it as being a linear transformation. It's a linear transformation on the space of functions that do not grow faster than exponential functions. So how do we prove that it's a linear operator? So what happens when we take the Laplace transform of a f of t plus b g of t? Well, the definition tells us that that's the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st a f of t plus b g of t dt. Well, we can rewrite that as the integral from zero to infinity of a e to the minus st f of t dt plus the integral from zero to infinity of b e to the minus st g of t dt. Then we can say that that's a times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt plus b times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st g of t dt. And that is a times the Laplace transform of f of t plus b times the Laplace transform of g of t. By the definition of the Laplace transform, of course, we're making an assumption that these two Laplace transforms actually exist. So the Laplace transform of a linear combination of two functions is a linear combination of the Laplace transforms. So that means that it's linear. That's going to be an important fact that we're going to use throughout uh, this section of the class. Okay, now um, let's look at some other properties. How about translation of the Laplace transform? What happens when you take the Laplace transform of e to the ct times a function f of t? Again, we're going to assume that we can find the Laplace transform of f of t. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times e to the ct f of t dt. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus s minus c t times f of t dt. So what does that do? Well, let's let capital F of s equal the Laplace transform of f of t. And that's a convention that we're going to use often. Often we'll say that the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t is capital F of, f of s. And then it turns out that what you see is that f of s minus c, so if we plug in s minus c as we've done right there, is equal to the Laplace transform of e to the ct times f of t. And that's how you translate 
the Laplace transform by multiplying by an exponential. So let's look at two examples. The first example is going to show us uh, the linearity property. Okay, so we can think of this as the Laplace transform of 4 plus 2 e to the minus 3t. That's 4 times the Laplace transform of 1 plus 2 times the Laplace transform of e to the 3t. Okay, and that is 4 times 1 over s, because the Laplace transform of 1 we saw last time was 1 over s, plus 2 over s minus 3, because the Laplace transform of e to the 3t we saw last time would be 1 over s minus 3. But also, we can think about the Laplace transform of e to the 3t as being the Laplace transform of e to the 3t times 1. In that case, then what we're going to do is we're going to translate, instead of the Laplace transform of 1 being 2 over s, the e to the 3t is going to translate that and make that s minus 3. And that's how we use that translation property of multiplying by exponentials. Okay, what about the Laplace transform of e to the 2t times sine of 4t? Okay, so first let's just note that the Laplace transform that we saw last time of sine 4t is going to equal 4 over s squared plus 4 squared. So that's a, that's a fact that we're going to use. I'm going to move that fact over here. So then what do we do if we want to find the Laplace transform of e to the 2t times sine 4t? Well, that's going to look like 4, and then s gets translated by 2. So it's going to be s minus 2 squared plus 16. So that's how you can use that translation property to find Laplace transforms of exponentials times functions for which you know the Laplace transform. I'm going to put up a chart of some very well-known functions for which we already know the Laplace transform. This chart is also in your book, but we can see things like the Laplace transform of 1 we saw as 1 over s, e to the at is 1 over s minus a, the sine of at, the Laplace transform is a over s squared plus a squared. Since we have these linearity and translation properties, you're going to be using this chart a lot to find Laplace transforms. So in this section of the book, you no longer have to find the Laplace transforms by hand. You can use this chart and then use linearity and translation properties to find those Laplace transforms. Okay. What about the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function? Okay, so we're going to assume that we can find Laplace transforms of our function. So we're going to let f of t be bounded by an exponential so that it does not grow any faster by an exponential. And then we want to know what is the Laplace transform of the derivative of f. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st f prime of t dt. And when you have the integral of something times a derivative, that should tell you, oh, you should use integration by parts. We should let u be e to the minus st, so that du is minus s e to the minus st. And then the dv should be the derivative. So the dv is going to be f prime of t, because the antiderivative v is therefore f of t. 
Okay, so that's going to be the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the minus st times f of t. That's the u times v. We're going to evaluate that between 0 and b. And then minus a negative, so plus s times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt. Okay, so what does that become? Well, looking at that limit, e to the minus st times f of t, that's going to go to 0 because f does not grow faster than an exponential. So the first term is going to go to 0. So that's going to leave me with minus e to the 0 f of 0 and then plus s and then what I have there is actually the Laplace transform of f of t. Notice that it appeared right there. So we say that the Laplace transform of f prime of t is equal to s times the Laplace transform of f of t and then minus this term f of 0. Okay, what about the Laplace transform of the second derivative? Well, the Laplace transform of the second derivative is going to be, well, wait a minute, let's use the Laplace transform of the first derivative formula, okay? It's going to be minus f prime of 0, because we're taking the Laplace transform of f prime, of f double prime, so that's going to be minus the single derivative, okay, plus s times the Laplace transform of f prime of t. Okay, well that's minus f prime of zero plus s. Oh, I don't even need to use the integral formula. I know what the Laplace transform of f prime of t is. That's going to be minus f of zero plus s times the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay, so we can write that the Laplace transform of f double prime of t is going to equal, so I'm going to do s times s, so that's going to be s squared Laplace transform of f of t minus s f of 0 minus f prime of 0. So I hope you notice that we're starting to develop a pattern. The Laplace transform of f prime of t gave you an s times f of t. And the Laplace transform of f double prime of t gave you s squared times the Laplace transform of f of t. Okay, so we see some sort of pattern that's emerging. And that is that multiplication, sorry, differentiation, when we do the Laplace transform, starts to look like multiplication by s and some other little factors. Okay, so the Laplace transform of takes derivatives and it makes them look like multiplication. Okay, let's do one more of these. Let's do the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of t, okay? So that's going to be minus the n minus first derivative, evaluated at 0, plus s times the Laplace transform of the n minus first derivative of t. And then uh, we can keep applying the same rules. So then that we would get minus the n minus first derivative at 0, OK? minus s times the n minus second derivative at 0, plus s squared times the Laplace transform of n minus 
2 of t. So we're just applying that same rule over and over and over again. Eventually, this starts to look at like minus f n minus 1 at 0 minus s the n minus 2 derivative at 0 minus, keep going along, to minus s to the n minus 2 f prime of 0 minus s to the n minus 1 f of 0. And then finally, plus s to the n Laplace transform of f of t. So we can say that the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of t, that another way to write that is s to the n Laplace transform of f of t. So n derivatives turned into the multiplication of s to the n, and then you've got all these extra little terms that get tacked on to the end, right there. Okay. So that's how you find the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function. Okay, let's do something slightly different. Let's take the derivative of the Laplace transform of a function. Okay, so here we're still using the convention that capital F of S is the Laplace transform of little f of t. So what's the derivative of the Laplace transform of a function? Okay, so that's going to be the derivative of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt. Now, that's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of the derivative of e to the minus st times f of t dt. And hopefully some of you are wondering, why can't I move that derivative under the integral sign? Okay, well, it has to do with the fact that we know that that integral converges, and we know that the integral of the derivative of the inside, both of those converge, okay? But you have to be careful about these things, and if you're the person who uh, is bothered by what I just did, right, then you are the person who wants to take a class in what we call real analysis so that you can understand why you can, say, move the derivative from outside the integral to the inside of the integral. Notice it is a derivative with respect to s, because I could not do that with the derivative with respect to t, which is the variable I'm integrating against. Okay, so I'm going to do the integral from 0 to infinity, and then the derivative with respect to s of that function is just going to be minus t e to the minus st times f of t dt. Okay, so notice the thing I'm taking the derivative of, okay, it, uh, it only depends on s in the exponential. So that's the only place I'm taking the derivative. Okay, well that's the Laplace transform of minus t times f of t. So the derivative of the Laplace transform is actually the Laplace transform of multiplying by a minus t. Okay, so that's just one derivative. How do we take lots of derivatives? Okay, so we're gonna need um, this formula here to help us out. We wanna take multiple derivatives. Okay, so we're gonna take the nth derivative of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring the derivative on the inside. So I guess we don't need that formula above. Okay, we're gonna bring the derivative to the inside. And then we're gonna get e to the minus st f of t dt, okay? So we're gonna take the derivative of that n times 
Now, if we take the derivative of that n times, we bring a minus t down n times, so it becomes minus t to the n, e to the minus st f of t dt, and that becomes the Laplace transform of minus t to the n of f of t. So if we want to take the derivative n times of our Laplace transform, then that's the Laplace transform of minus t to the n times f of t. Okay, let's look at some examples of how we can use these facts, okay? So the Laplace transform of t times sine t, okay? Well, that's actually minus the Laplace transform of minus t times sine t. Well, our formula just said that that's going to be d ds times the Laplace transform of sine t. Okay, so what is the Laplace transform of sine t? No, sorry, minus d ds, Laplace transform of sine t. Okay, so that's going to be, I'll move this on to the next row, minus d ds of 1 over 1 squared plus s squared. That's the Laplace transform of sine t. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of that with the negative sign there, and I would get 2s over 1 plus s squared squared. Okay, there's several ways that you can do that, but I'm sure you're all capable of finding that derivative. Okay, what about the Laplace transform of t squared e to the minus 3t? Okay, well, that's going to be the Laplace transform of minus t squared e to the minus 3t. Okay, that's the Laplace transform. Sorry, that is two derivatives of the Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t. Okay. So that's going to be the second derivative of the Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t is actually 1 over s plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to take two derivatives of that, and if you do that, that's going to be 2 over, 2 over s plus 3. And that's an, just another way that you can find Laplace transforms using some of these properties.